have the relationship that makes you insanely happy, no matter how that looks. Welcome to another episode of Everyday Badassery. I'm your host, Christine Lozada, and I am bringing you through my relationship with Meatball today to help you ask some questions for yourself, whether you're in a relationship looking for one or maybe looking to get out of one, but questions to ask yourself given my experience and our journey in our crazy and wild relationship. Hi, Meepa. Hello. What's today, going on, everybody? <laughs> today we are traveling in, I know it looks like we're in Italy, but we are in Orlando, Florida. We are at Universal right now. It's been an amazing time, a really great trip. Yeah, it's been really beautiful. It's really nice weather, too. And we have a very interesting relationship, which has been going on for how many years? Uh, it's been going on for four years. Almost four years. And when I first met Mipa, it was kind of a scandalo. <laughs> I met Meepa while traveling. You were on a cruise. We were cruising in the Bahamas. Yep. And I met you where? Uh, you met me at a silent disco party. Uh, you- headphone party. <laughs> um, basically, it's uh, two DJs kind of playing music, and you could pick the channel, which music you want to hear. And Meepa was always listening to the same channel that I was on. We were both there alone. And it wasn't until the end of the night that I came up to you, ripped your headphones off, and was like, excuse me, why do you know the lyrics to every obscure favorite hip-hop song of mine? And you said... I'm a DJ. And I was like, (laughs) (laughs) No wonder. (laughs) And when I met you, we totally hit it off. Yeah. And this is a question to ask yourself. I felt something for you immediately, 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 and knew I was insanely interested in you, despite anything else. It's despite having only known you for a few days. But when I met you during that time, you were in what kind of a relationship? I was in a relationship. I was dating a girl for quite some time. Um, I mean, it wasn't the greatest relationship. Obviously, I was at the bar alone by myself because <laughs> our relationship was on the rocks. And, uh, you know, um, I'm, I'm a fun person and I like to have fun. And uh, me and Christine, um, when we first met, I mean, it was, you know, what so I've always wanted. So to answer that question, he was in a relationship and so was I. I was still married at that time. Actually, just days before I met you, I had just told my husband that I wanted to separate before I went onto that cruise I was there with my family not my my other boyfriend (laughs) (laughs) and after we met on that cruise we went our separate ways I went back to San Francisco you went back to South Florida Mm -hmm. and you and I stayed in touch we talked all the time yeah we talked all the time on the phone and we decided to try something out in which I came to South Florida for a weekend with you yeah which same thing right everything seems like oh my gosh you're both in relationships that's not right she's still married but at the at the end of the day the question i was asking myself is what is my heart telling me and my heart was telling me there is something so so special about this meatball and you should go to south florida and spend time with him and we did i came to west palm beach and you and i had an epic weekend We did, we did. As, um, you know, like you were just saying, uh, you know, oh, you know, people kind of judge it like, uh, oh, it's not right, you guys are in a relationship. You know, nobody's perfect. Uh, We're definitely not perfect by any means. But like you were saying, you know, uh, to have that feeling, it was a feeling I never felt before. So I definitely wanted to act on that feeling. So And you you know know what? Actually, did you talk to any of your friends about it at that time? No, I, I, you know, we didn't, I didn't really talk to anybody about anything. Neither did I. And I actually think that's really important because in hindsight, if I were to say, hey, you know, so-and-so good friend of Christine's who looks out for Christine, who has my best interest in mind, this is what happened. When you think about what we're talking about on a piece of paper written, it would say, Lou in a relationship, Christine still married randomly met on a cruise which by the way if you google this the number one thing you are not supposed to do on a cruise is meet another person like that <laughs> right, that is like one that. of the top pieces of advice that they have <laughs> for cruising so you're not supposed to meet someone in this way and this dude lives in south florida and he's a dj like excuse me he's not even your quote-unquote type like what are you doing and i didn't even bother asking because it didn't matter my heart said go 
go to West Palm Beach, go spend this weekend with Lou. And when I did, whether, and I tell this to everybody when I talk about how I met you and how our relationship progressed very quickly, I said, if I die today, or if I die when I'm 99, that goes down in history as the best weekend of my life. That was a great weekend. We had so much fun. And right after that weekend, I just knew. I knew. Yeah. And I closed down my life 10 days later in San Francisco, and I moved to West Palm Beach. Yeah. I moved to South Florida to just try things out with you. Yeah. And it was the best decision. You and I had a lot of learning and getting used to each other because yeah. we are so, so different than what we're used, the type of person we're used to being with. And so the question to ask yourself here as a listener or a viewer is what, you know, what is your type, quote unquote, like what kind of a person are you always trying to be with? And does that necessarily serve you? Or is that necessarily the right, the right type of person that you want to be with b before and now, because sometimes our tastes, actually, no, definitely, our tastes change over time. Yeah. We are not the same, we are not the same human being for all, however many years of our life we have. So what was your type before? Well, my type was very fake, um, you know, just uh, the makeup, the hair, you know, just very um, not real. I mean, it was just uh, very uh, look it was always a very look-based orientation. I never had a real connection with uh, the relationships I was in before. But when I met you, it was it was just. I mean, obviously you're beautiful, but you know it was just so much more of a connection. I'm so sorry. What did you say? I'm so. Sorry. You're so beautiful. Oh, you know sorry, that I, already. I didn't hear you. Sorry. Something just. <laughs> you finished. know. What did you say? But it was like a full package. It was like beauty and and a connection, which, like I said, for a long time, in a lot of the relationships I ever had, um, I was missing that connection. Well, that makes you know, me being feel myself. Special. Yeah. Oh, I love you. And for me, my type was the highly educated corporate world, either semi-professional or am amateur professional athlete who lived in these cities, right, that I was living in. And you were <laughs> the opposite of that. And yeah, at the same time, it's time. like <laughs> it, it didn't matter because I felt something. And so here's the next question to ask yourself, which is what are your absolute core values in life and how much do those core values really align with the person you're in you're in a relationship with and that's part of the reason why I'm so attracted to you and you and I have such a deep trusting relationship with each other yeah, it's because our core values are so 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 aligned and our core values are things like absolute loyalty you and i are so loyal to the people that we love in our lives to our family members to our close friends to fill in the blank you and i have insane work ethic we you and i are very entrepreneurial and you and i are super career focused and we really care about work ethic and i would say and this list is very long i'll just give one more example which is heart you and I are very loving and giving people. Yeah. And that's something I was very attracted to you to you about, which is you have a really, really big heart and you're very, very giving. And I basically, like when I look at you, I see myself, a lot of myself in you. And that's why like, I love you so much because we're so aligned in the things we truly, truly believe in, in life. And so as you're watching or listening, ask yourself, like, what are those things that are so important to you? You know, like if you, for example, were a super lazy human being who, you know, if there's work to be done, you ain't going to go get it done. Like I would lose all respect for you, but that's not who you are. Right. And so it's really important that it, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how the relationship was formed. It doesn't matter like what that person or who that person was in the past or whether or not they're the type of person you thought you should be with. It's all about, are they at their core, someone that you can really love because in theory, we all love ourselves first, right? 100%. Yeah. yeah. And so kind of building off of that, the next thing was like, there were so many things where because of the shoulds of what society, what my family, what my friends expect out of me, for example, I never thought I would ever, ever, ever introduce you to my family. 
I was like, there's no way. There's no way I can introduce Meatball to Carl. There's just no way. My dad is the person who expects his daughters to be with highly educated, significant others who, and then the list is insanely long in terms of his expectations. And so I never thought I would ever introduce you to my dad given, you know, you're not formally educated. You never worked in a formal corporate office. You, and the list, the list is very long. <laughs> And when I did decide to introduce you to my dad, something super magical happened. Actually, talk about your relationship that you have with my dad. Uh, me and your dad are really cool. We're really close. Um, he taught me a lot as well. Um, you know, got me introduced into, um, you know, I was dabbling a little bit in the market, but he's a really, uh, he's a pro when it comes to trading options. And uh, I picked on it up on it very quickly um you know going back to what you were saying yeah i wasn't formally educated with a lot of different things but uh you know i always hustled i always worked really hard to get everywhere and that's something my dad absolutely respects out of you okay hold on i asked lou about his relationship with my dad and i'm going to give you an example of what this looks like i talk to my mom on the phone a lot and when my dad is passing by the phone, my mom will be like, I'll talk to your daughter really quick. My dad will be like, hi, boozy guys. That's my nickname. Just go with it. Uh, I'm outside. I'm working. Okay. Love you. Bye. But when my mom is on the phone with Lou, or if Lou calls my family just to say hi, even when I'm not there, or if I'm traveling, you and my dad talk on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we talk quite a bit. We talk uh, different strategy. We talk about all kinds of different things, different business opportunities that uh, I've been getting into and things like that as well. So we're always constantly on the phone and we're talking different strategies when it comes to options and I stuff. I mean, so. in theory, I <laughs> should be really happy that this is the case, but I also feel like it's very offensive to yeah. me. Cause you're I'm just, just upset because like... they love me more than you. That's what happens. <laughs> See? See? So if you're listening, the question to ask yourself is, you know, like, what are the expectations you have of yourself? of the type of person you're with or the type of expectations that your family members or your friends or whomever have of you. And can you just, can you just let that go? Because when you think about a relationship in terms of the shoulds, I should be in a relationship with this kind of person, it leaves a blind spot or it creates a blind spot for the type of person that you could potentially be with that could potentially make you insanely happy and actually Let's shift to talking about happiness because part of the reason why, actually there's two reasons why I feel insanely, insanely happy with you. Actually, can you guess one of them? tell me, tell me. <laughs> I think one would be is your, your true self around me. That. I think that's uh, number one. True, super weird, bizarre self. <laughs> and We get a little weird. No, not a little. We get really freaking weird all the time <laughs> in all the places and in public and we're just super weird with each other. But we are exactly who we want to be with each other. I mean, just to give you a, a couple weird examples, um, because Lou has an entertainment business and a photo booth, you have lots of silly props. And one yeah. of your props that he recently bought that I don't think ever made it to the photo booths is a bear head. Yeah. And I used to put this bear head on every time you would come home and I would hide behind the door <laughs> and like jump out at you in this bear head and like be so excited. Well, because I was so excited <laughs> you were home. Or I would do things like I would um, I would hold the door on the other side <laughs> so when you're trying to unlock it, <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> yeah. you wouldn't be able to get in. And it's confusing at first because you don't know if someone's on the other side until you hear me starting yeah, to giggle. Giggling. And then I would open the door a little bit and be like, what's the password? <laughs> what's the password? <laughs> Don't tell them it's actually the password for a lot yeah. of things. <laughs> and so he would always have to say the password. Then I'd be on the other side wearing the bear head. Or did I ever wear it? No, it was always the bear head. Yeah, bear, the bear head is yeah. the most ridiculous thing ever. So we're super weird in our relationship. All that to say, how real are you and how authentic are you to yourself in the relationships that you're in? You and I are so ourselves all the time. Yeah. This sounds really weird, but one of the things that I care a lot about is to be in a relationship, be in a relationship with someone that I can truly express myself. And it's not necessarily in a negative way, but for me, being able to use profanity to be able to f express myself is really important to me. And no one knows how to use profanity the way you are able to creatively use profanity. <laughs> I really appreciate that about you. Well, thank you. And the other thing thank is, you. you know, the F word just rolls off of our tongue so easily. And it's something where you and I can just have natural everyday conversations, whether we're talking about 
being half and half being out in the refrigerator <laughs> or not and it just it feels really good right yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah and being able to express yourself actually here's one more a lot of people are like oh that's so sweet you call him meatball like oh that's so cute no meatball is not a sweet endearing term it's no. very very purposely offensive yeah <laughs> 100% that is offensive. Uh, how do you but I like it and I laugh at it. How do you describe what a meatball is? Meatball is like, a, you know, like uh, the expressions me and my friends. Oh, look at that meatball over there. Like, you know, like uh, like the Italian, like thrones would be like the other word. But it's just like, look at it. That guy's an idiot, you know, type of thing. <laughs> so like that's why that's why we say it. And, uh, you know, so she calls me uh, idiot all the time. <laughs> you really are. And I love you. It's good times, though. I you for that that's why she loves me (laughs) but when you are able to truly be yourself in a relationship and you truly have values that are super aligned with the other person it means that you're able to have a type of relationship that's built so 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 deeply in trust and that's one of the things that so many people who especially watch my travel channel see me traveling I'm in Florida for the first three years of our relationship I was in Florida for one week a month yeah to say hi to you and so many people don't understand like how is he okay with you always traveling like how like how do you trust each other like aren't you worried like when you're gone he's cheating on you and doesn't it bother him that sometimes you're traveling with other men or you're in the list is so freaking long yeah now a lot of that has to do with like i'm secure with who i am i know you're secure with who you are with yourself and um you know and that's what really makes it work and um, I, I don't worry about those things, you know. And, and I that's trust such you. an important part, yeah. what you're saying right there. You're really secure in yourself. And the question to ask yourself is how much do you love and trust yourself? Like for me, especially being a solo female traveler, I love spending time with myself. I have so much fun on my own and I trust myself no matter what kind of challenging situation I get myself in when I'm solo traveling. I trust myself to be able to get myself out of that situation. And the other thing just to add on to that is, um, you know, we both like different things too. Oh yeah. So there's things that she wants to do that I'm not going to hold you back from. Scuba diving. You know, yeah, like I I don't do all that stuff. Riding your bike across Ethiopia. So for me to be like, hey, listen, you know, I don't trust you or I don't want you to go on those trips, that would be super selfish, you know, and, you know, and in any relationship, I think that each person has to kind of give their, their partner that space and let them do the things that they really love to do because you know every time you come back from a trip i mean we're super excited it's like it almost like it re- reignites everything you know and um you know and again you never want to feel like well for me i never wanted to feel like i took anything away from you yeah. to be in a relationship with me i always wanted you to hey go do your thing go you know travel the world you know i'm not that you just travel i don't really particularly like a lot of things i mean you told me on a cruise ship i like it because you know they're driving i'm not driving i'm drinking having a good time <laughs> you know like that's me i i you know you you like the exploring aspect of a lot of things which i do like to do some of that stuff but there's certain things like you know i'm not it into. looks different and that's okay because like i too often uh, even here's a stupid example in a previous relationship i was in which is I don't know if we're compatible because, Christine, you don't really like to watch TV and we need to have a TV show together. And it's like, Mm. yo, if you like to watch TV, that's fine. I support you. I'm not really into that. Go do your thing. Whereas you and I, we are aligned and have the same interests when it comes to values. That's way more important than... uh, And so many people feel like they need to be in these relationships where... Oh, they like love to do everything together. Yeah. You and I do a lot of fun things together, and but not things, every yeah. part of our life. And there's things we don't do together. And like, you know, and yeah. I'm busy working a lot of times with a lot of different things. And, and I like to do the type of work that I do. And, you know, even the work that I do sometimes, you know, just like I don't particularly want to record and, and video all these different places. Just like <laughs> you don't want to come to weddings with me when I'm DJing <laughs> weddings. And, and that's normal. And that's okay because we, we're supposed to have different interests. But like you said, aligning with those core values is the most important. Yeah. And actually, this might be the most important part of this podcast, which is another thing at least to be aware of, ideally aligned with. It doesn't have to be. But it's something that I asked you to do very, very early in our relationship. And it's probably something that nobody in your previous relationships has ever asked you to do, 
which was, please, can you please read and review this book about love languages? And so if you're not familiar with this, I'll link it in the show notes below, but Love Languages is a book and it comes with a super fast quiz if you don't even wanna read the book. And it tells you, for you as a person, how do you like to be loved? And it's various buckets, things like, I don't know, do you like to receive gifts or do you like people who do things for you and show you their love through the type of, you know, things that they do for you that are more of a service versus a physical product. And so when you understand your own love language and how you want to be loved, it's easier to be in a relationship where you can communicate to the other person, hey, like this is what like really speaks to me as a person. So for me, being being given gifts, like I don't need gifts. Like I don't like stuff. So if all day the only way you showed me your love is by giving me things, that wouldn't do anything for me. Yeah. But one thing that was really important for you and I is that we both read love languages and took the quiz in the very beginning. And one of the things that was really important going back to super aligned values, we have a very unique and rare score for our love language, which I, I will add to the show notes, but you and I got the same exact score across all of those things. Mm. And so I've learned, you know, and this is part of the reason why, like I really listen to my heart and my gut about you because from day one, you and I expressed our love for each other in the same exact way you and I love to receive that. Yeah. And that created a very powerful relationship. And it's just a natural thing that, yeah, of, naturally, of course we trust each other. Of course we're going to go have our own interests and do our own things. And when we come back together and go have epic weekends like we're having right now, not in Italy, but in Orlando at Universal... It's going to be amazing. Yeah, we're going to have a great time. Sure. Yeah, and at the end of the day, you know, everybody's love language, whether you read that book or not, it doesn't matter. You know, because at the end of the day, you know, you got to find what works for you. And what, you know, and then you got to really love yourself and before you could really show that love to other people. And, um, you know, again, there's going to be some of you out there right now judging all day. And that's okay. Because, <laughs> you know. We it, won't care. Yeah. It's, you know, like, <laughs> You don't pay my bills. It's all good. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. But again, you got to just do what makes you happy. And, um, you know, it may not look like what you thought it looked like either. Because, uh, you know, we all have a different path. And sometimes it's not the path that we actually think it's going to be. It's going to be something totally wildly different. And you know what? You should really be open to it. You know? Hell yeah. Signature question. Do we have a badass relationship? Yeah. Hell I say yeah. we have a Yes, I like our relationship. I love our relationship. And this helicopter overhead. Love it even yes. more. <laughs> Go forth. Have a badass. Find a badass. Or improve your own badass relationship. Connect with us. Check the show notes for all the things we talked about in this episode. And if you found value in it, tell us in the reviews. It really helps to get this distributed. And we will see you in the next adventure. Let's go have some fun. Are you ready? Let's do it. What are we about to do? Uh... No, we're about to go get hammered yeah, at the pool, hammered, stupid. Oh my god, what else are we <laughs> doing? Alright, ciao. <laughs>